going on guys in this video we are going to see how to find the local minimum and local maximum for a multivariable function and if you remember when we have a single variable function to find local maximum and local minimum we use the second derivative test okay now here we are going to do the same thing we are going to do the partial derivative partial second derivative and then we are going to see whether we have a local minimum or local maximum now to do that let's take the first partial derivative that's going to be fx I'm going to take the derivative of this function with respect to x so when we take the derivative of this function with respect to x we treat y as a constant so this is going to become 3x square minus this x is going to become 1 so we will have negative 12y and since this is a constant this is going to be 0 so this is going to be our partial derivative with respect to x now we are going to find partial derivative with respect to y when we do that we treat x as a constant so this one becomes 0 and this is going to become negative 12x and here we are going to have 8 times 3 that's going to be 24 24y square okay 24y square now this is our uh, first partial derivative now to find whether we have a local maximum or local minimum we have to use this equation d is equal to fxx times fyy minus fxy square so this is the equation we are going to use if we have a value that is greater than zero so like for example if we have a value that is less than zero it means there, there is no minimum or maximum this is so called saddle point okay saddle point and when we have d is equal to zero it's inconclusive so we have to use a different technique when we have d is greater than zero it means there's a minimum or maximum then we have to check the f second derivative with respect to x so we have to see fx fxx value and see whether we get a positive answer or second a negative answer and if we get a positive answer it means it's a local minimum if we get a negative answer it means it's a local maximum now to calculate this one we have to find the second derivative okay now we have found out the first derivative with respect to x now we are going to find the second derivative of this one with respect to x so what we are going to do is we are going to take the first derivative with respect to x and then we are going to find the derivative of this one with respect to x again so this is going to become 6x and this is a constant y is a constant so this is going to be 0 and now we are going to find f y y and here x is a constant so this is going to be 0 this is going to be just 48y okay 48y and also we need fxy to do this one now fxy is this is first x derivative with respect to x that is this one and then we have to take the derivative of that one with respect to y so if I take the derivative of this one with respect to y this x is a constant so this is going to be 0 and if I take the derivative of with respect to 1 uh, y this is going to be 1 and this is going to be just negative 12 okay now we have everything after that to find the critical points what we have to do is we have to equate the first derivative to 0 so we have to equate this one to 0 and also this one to 0 and we have to find out our x y points okay now let's do that so this is going to be 3x square minus 12y is equal to 0 and the second equation we are going to have is negative 12x plus 12 actually 24y square is equal to 0 now let's simplify this equation this is going to become x square if I divide everything by 3 this is going to become x square minus 4y is equal to 0 and here I can divide everything by 12 so this is going to become negative x plus 2y y square is equal to 0 now we have two unknown variables you can solve this one using many many different methods but I am going to use the substitution I'm going to turn this one into 2y square is equal to x I'm rearranging this one and then instead of x I'm going to plug this 2y square in this equation so here if I plug that one this is going to become 2y square square I'm substituting this one here okay and minus 4y is equal to 0 and if we square this one this is going to become 
4y power 4 minus 4y is equal to 0. Therefore, if I take the 4y common, this is going to become y cube minus 1 is equal to 0. From this one, we can see y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1 because y cube is going to be equal to 1. And if I cube root this one, there's only possible answer is 1. So this is y is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. Now we have to see when y is equal to 0, what is the x value? To find that one out, we plug it in this equation, right? So when you plug this one in this equation, you will see, see that x is going to be equal to 0. So when y is equal to 0, x is equal to 0. And when you plug y is equal to 1 here, you will have x is equal to 2. So this, this is going to be x is equal to 2, okay? Now from this one, we can see we are having the points 0, 0, and here this is 2, 2, 1. Okay, these are our critical points. Now we have to see whether we have a local minimum or local maximum at these points. To do that, we had to check these values. Now let's find the values when we have these points in the second derivatives. So when we have 0, 0, if you plug that one here, when x is equal to 0, this is going to be just 0. Okay, and when we have, so let's note that one also down. So for 0, 0, okay, this is for 0, 0. When we have 0, 0, this is going to be 0. And when we have 2, 1, here we only have x value, so this is going to be 6 times 2, that's going to be equal to 12, okay? And uh, let's see for this one, 0, 0, this is going to be 0. And when we have 2, 1, we plug the y value, that's 1, so this is going to be equal to 48. And here, 0, 0, or 2, 1, we are going to have negative 12 because we don't have any x or y value, so it's going to be just the same value. So this is going to be just negative 12, and here also we are going to have 0, 0 is equal to negative 12. Uh, this is 2, 1, also equal to negative 12. Okay, now after we find out this one, now this part is unnecessary. Our main purpose is to find these two points. Okay, let's note that one down in the top. So we have 0, 0 and 2, comma 1. Okay, so these are the two points. Now let's get rid of this one to do the rest of the part, okay? Okay, let's get rid of this. Now what we are going to do is, we are going to apply these values in this equation. This is our equation to find out whether we have a local minimum or local maximum. Now we are going to plug this one in this equation to see whether we have a local minimum or local maximum. Now let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to be d, f. Now let's check 0, 0 point. So d, 0, 0. So at d, 0, 0, what is the fxs value? That is this one. 0, 0, this is 0. So this is 0. Then multiply by fyy. So when 0, 0, this is also 0. Multiply by 0. Then minus fxy square. So when 0, 0, we have negative 12. Negative 12. And if we square this one, this is going to give us 24 plus, uh, not 24, 144. So 144, that's going to be positive because when we square this negative, that's going to make this one positive. But here, here we have a negative sign. Okay, so that's going to make this one negative 144. Now we have to check when we have d21, what's the fxx? fxx when we have d21 is this one, 12. 12 times when we have fyy this value is 48 minus when we have 2 1 this is 12 so minus negative 12 so negative 12 square and if you calculate this value you will get 432 so as I discussed before when we have a value that is less than 0 it means there is no minimum or maximum that's a saddle point. So we can say this 0, 0 is a saddle point. Here we don't have any minimum or maximum. Now when we have a value greater than 0, there is a minimum or max maximum. That's the conclusion. But to find out that's a minimum or maximum, we have to check this 
fxx value for that point. Here we are dealing with 2, 1. So for 2, 1, fxx is 12, positive 12, right? So when we have a positive value, that means that's a local minimum. If we have a negative value, that's local maximum. So this is positive value, so this is going to be a local minimum. So for 2, 1, we have a local minimum. Okay. And also to remind again, when we have a value that's equal to 0, it means that's if that's inconclusive. So we have to use another different method. Now from this one, we only have less than 0 and greater than 0. If it's less than 0, we don't have any minimum or maximum. When we have greater than 0, we have something. To see what is that something, we have to look at this fxx. And if it's positive, that means that's a local minimum. If it's negative, that means that's a local maximum. And that's how we do this kind of problems. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.